Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, tourists stick out like a sore thumb, don't they? You see people walking around in the midtown Manhattan, looking up at the tall buildings with their cameras around their necks. You know they're a tourist. If you go to Virginia Beach, the ones wearing the t-shirts that say, Virginia is for lovers, 99% of them don't live there. They're visiting. We can always tell a tourist, especially during seasons, you know, if it's a beach community or the, you know, the winter with the mountains for skiing, you can always tell who the tourist is by the way they dress and by how they act. Remember, I uh, went to a conference about 10 years ago at the United States Military Academy, West Point. And it was a group of people going from building to building the historical sites with tour guides explaining everything. And the group that was huddled from place to place all had their t-shirts, their hats, Go Army, West Point all over them. You knew we were not cadets, especially by our age, but you knew we didn't belong, that we were out of place. We were tourists, checking things out, looking around, and it was obvious. And as we came to the chapel that was on the uh, base or the campus, they wanted to tour the, the chapel. And as we were standing there, I was among a crowd as they were coming in. The tour guide in the back of the church in the narthex was welcoming people as they walked through the door. I said, where are you from? People that I knew would say, oh, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm from Connecticut. I'm from West Virginia, Kentucky. And all of a sudden, the woman looks at me and I'm ready to blurt out New York. And she says, you're religious, aren't you? And I'm like, what? I'm religious, how did you know? I mean, just, it really caught me off guard. And I didn't realize for a second that I was in my typical garb, not this garb, but I was dressed as the tourist. And I had my hat that said, go army on. And as I entered, without even thinking, as I entered the chapel space, I took the cap off. And she says, only religious people come in here and remove their cap out of respect. And I thought that was interesting. I just did that. It had nothing to do with my spiritual beliefs or anything. It was just habit coming into a building, especially a holy place. It's what you do. You know, we take off our hats for different occasions. You know, um, if you go to a sporting event anywhere and they start playing the national anthem, people will rise and if they're wearing a hat, they will remove it. It's a sign of respect. Hats off to you. You're respecting the nation. You're respecting God as you enter a holy place. Now, I don't know why wearing a hat would defile something if we came in here wearing a hat. And incidentally, if you look at the scripture, there's no reference to not wearing hats except for women. Paul says women wearing hat, must wear hats as they enter the worship space. Now, that doesn't seem to carry over today because not many women wear hats. And it's the opposite for the males. But it's a custom. It's a ritual. It's what we do. And sometimes we get so, so caught up in the ritual and the customs, we forget what's behind the reason. What was the rationale? You see, a hat was worn outside where it was cold because you wanted to keep the heat in. And as you entered the building, you took it off because you didn't need it. And the other reason that you took the hat off is because you're outside walking the dusty roads, getting dusty and dirty. You don't want to wear the hat inside because you're bringing the filth from outside. So you remove it. That was the reason. And this custom didn't start in biblical times. It was probably in the medieval times that it took place. But it's a respect that when we walk into a holy space, we remove our hats. And also when you eat at a meal, a restaurant, when you go indoors, 
It's a sign because of our customs that when you enter, it's changed today, but the practice was you remove your hat again because of respect. Hats off to you. You're respecting your host, your guest. You go to a restaurant, you take your hat off. Because if you wear your hat at the table, you're bringing the dirt into the food. And then as you put your hat on, it's a sign that you're leaving the space that you're in. Now, if you're wearing the hat, it would be perceived by the guest that you don't want to be there. And it's insulting because you're not being accepting the welcoming that they're offering. So you don't wear that. So hats off to show respect. And we get caught up today in the gospel message about respect and process and procedure when we get hung up with the law. The Pharisees show up to Jesus and say, why do your disciples not wash their hands? They're defiled. They're outside and they're coming in. They're not taking their hats off. They're being disrespectful. Now, are the Pharisees really concerned about the law, or they're concerned about the practice. They've forgotten what's really important. What are the disciples doing? They're worshiping the Lord and praising God everything that they do. But the Pharisees are focused on the law, not the intent. And you know, today we have all kinds of laws they guide us and give us direction. There's a reason for law. It's so that we all get along appropriately and we care and respect one another. But Jesus reminds us it's not the law that we're to obey. It's the reason and the rationale behind the law. You see, the Torah, and if I've had a children's sermon, I've done that before. I have a bowl. I don't know if you remember seeing this and it's filled with marbles. There's 613 marbles in this jar to represent the 613 laws in Mosaic law, the Old Testament, that the Pharisees are trying to enforce. 613 laws. We look at the Ten Commandments and we have trouble obeying them. And the Pharisees are nitpicking about the purity laws, about the cleanliness, and it makes sense. And today it's good hygiene to follow what Jesus is saying. But they're trying to pick and say you're not following the law rather than the intent. And Jesus responds to the Pharisees and says, you're, not, you're just a bunch of hypocrites. Then he talks to all in a teaching moment and refocuses and talks about what really defiles. And he says it comes from the heart, which is interesting. The Jewish Torah, the Torah has 613 laws. If you look at scripture, there's 673 references to the word heart. More interest and more attention is on heart. And then if you add to that other emotions, that they believe came from the heart, as we do, the attention and the focus is on the heart. And Jesus is saying the heart is what defiles, what comes out, not what goes in, dirty hands, whatever you eat, it's what comes out of you. What are your intentions? How do you respect others? Do you tip your hats to others? Do you take your hats off to others in respect? and care for the others in the community? What comes out of the heart and why is sin in the heart? That sounds kind of hard and some people look at it and it's been discussed over time. St. Augustine used to say in a sense that sin and the evilness that's in us is a default setting of the human spirit. We were born with the original sin. It's a default setting. So whatever comes out Unless we correct it and know and try to act differently, that's the only thing we can do is to recognize that to serve others. And others say it's that God has given each and every one of us free will. Whatever comes out of our heart is our own decision. 
Do we decide to respect others and care for others and do good works or not and be evil? And the third is always the good fallback is our heart has been polluted by Satan. We blame Satan for all our hearts, but still comes out. And how do we fight off that? How do we fight that off? So our intentions and our goals that Jesus teaches us is to care for one another and to respect one another. Jesus gives us a teaching moment and reminds us of the rules, the laws, the procedures, the culture, the rituals that we have are not to say we're wrong, but it's to guide us in our hearts what comes out. He's advising us and teaching us that we have to take our hats off. We have to tip our hats to others. We have to care for one another. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to take your hats off, forget the law, and praise God and give the respect to one another and our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.